This one is going to work exactly like the ones we just did, but now you're going to have three answers because we have three polynomials being multiplied together, which equals zero. But only one of them actually has to equal zero. So let's start with x plus 2. We need this to equal zero. So that gives us x equals negative 2 by subtracting 2 from both sides. So this would give us a true statement. What about x minus 7? We need this to equal 0, so adding 7 to both sides, and we get x is 7. Then finally, we've got 3x minus 8. We need this to equal 0, so plus 8 on both sides, and we get 3x equals 8. Let's divide both sides by 3, and that gives us x equals 8 thirds. Yep, three answers. These aren't too bad because we didn't actually have to factor this one out, which eventually we may do. But I mean, if they put four or five of these on there, is that going to be too difficult? It'll be a little bit more time consuming, but the objective and the process is still the same. So if, if they do put a number on the outside of this, I mean, what number do you want? Big, small, doesn't matter. Four. four. That 4 is not going to affect any of this as long as we can get those polynomials in the parentheses, binomial specifically, to be 0. So pretty much we get to ignore the 4 there. On the graph, that would, that would make a difference, but right here it's not. In fact, if it was a negative 4, let's say it was just a negative out in front of that, so the 4 wasn't even there, still doesn't matter.